Okay, I hope I don't take a bite and lose a tooth. <laughs> Members and supporters of Jewish Voice for Labour are staging a protest at the BBC's Portland Place Centre on Sunday. That's us. Hooray! Calling the corporation to account for election coverage that falls disastrously what? short of its own formal standards of accuracy and balance. Okay, well we're finishing it. JBL points to allegations that the Labour Party is riddled with anti-Semitism, oh, okay. being reported as quasi-factual, well with no indication well that they are fiercely contested. Oh, in particular, uh, no, the group, whose members are active uh, in at least half of the constituency the Labour Party. I need a page turner. <laughs> At least half of the constituency Labour parties in the country takes issues with the BBC for persistently sidelining expert Jewish commentators critical of the attacks on Labour. In the closing stages of an acrimonious election campaign, we wrote, the BBC's coverage of anti-Semitism charges against the Labour Party has been both unbalanced and uncritical. That was the JBL letter co-chairs Jenny Manson and Leo Levain said on Thursday in a letter to the Director General Tony Hall and Director of News and Current Affairs Fran Unser. The most recent example is uncritical reporting of the Jewish labour movement's leak of its own submission to the Equality and Human Rights Commission. JLM re-ran long debunked allegations against Jeremy Corbyn and the party adding uncorroborated charges from individuals, many of whom have already had their testimony powerfully challenged. A new investigation by journalist Paddy French into BBC's Panorama programme is Labour anti-Semitic gives many examples. The interim report titled Is the BBC Anti-Labour is being made public today and flyers for that publication have been distributed. BBC's coverage of JLM's manufactured news entirely disregarded JVL's own submission to the EHRC, which is freely available online. This is yet another example of the corporation's disgraceful practice of editing out of the news stream material that challenges the Labour's anti-Semitic narrative. Leah Levain said, we were pleased to receive an almost instant reply from Fran Unsworth to our letter, but we were deeply disappointed by its dismissive tone. We are requesting a meeting to discuss our concerns. The Portland Place protest coincides with the demonstration in Parliament Square purporting to represent Jewish fears about anti-Semitism in British society. JBL questions the motives of the event's organisers, a group calling itself campaign against anti-Semitism, which claims unconvincingly that the rally it is called four days before the UK general election will be non-political. <laughs> in a statement on the CAA rally, JBL notes the alarming rise in anti-Semitic attacks and the broader rise of the far right, alongside the normalisation of racist ideas. It says that over the last four years, quote, the CAA and others have concentrated their efforts on a concerted campaign to associate the Labour Party with anti-Semitism. They have chosen to minimise, if not ignore entirely, anti-Semitism, racism and Islamophobia in the Conservative Party and more widely. It remains to be seen, says Jenny Manson, how the BBC reports the events planned for Sunday. We hope there will be some attempt at accuracy and balance about the underlying issues that has been sadly lacking to date. That's the statement we delivered. It contains within it our letter to the BBC on Thursday to Tony Hall and Franz Unsworth, and also our statement, a longer statement, about the CAA rally taking place today. Do go online, do read those, do read Peter Oborn, which we've reposted on the JBL website, calling into question the BBC's utter failure to hold politicians of the centre and right responsible and do read the large number of statements we have published from Jewish members of the Labour Party, proud to be Jewish, proud to be Labour and voting for a Labour victory on Thursday. Thank you very much.